French, French toast. toast. Mac and cheese. Um, scrambled eggs and the French toast. Monkey bread? Monkey bread, meat egg, monkey pancakes. Meat egg, pancakes. Pink pink. Egg, pancakes. Strawberry, I mean pink pancakes and regular pancakes and scrambled eggs. Cake. Cookies. Lasagna. Baked potatoes. Hamburgers. I like popcorn too, by the way. <laughs> Broccoli. Roast. Roast. Yeah. Broccoli. Broccoli. Hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Number eight. Yeah. I don't like eggs. Uh, spicy pasta. Spicy pasta. I don't like potatoes. It's yucky and mac and cheese. Is there anything she cooks that you don't like? Go to the playground. Um, ride bikes. Walk the dog. Walk with my mom. It's crafts. Crafts. I like when she bakes. Bakes cookies. Bakes cookies. Bad ones. I like to bake with her. Helps us with my homework. She helps me sometimes clean my room, and I really like it because like my room is normally a mess. Play pickleball. Set the table. Get off the screens. Do your homework. Get off your iPad! Maybe later. Caitlin stopped. No, Julia. Get to bed. Make your bed. Make what's bed? Yeah. Clean your room. Clean your room. Don't get your sandals dirty. I love, I love you. you. She is special. She is fun. Cute. Nice. Kind. He is beautiful and he's nice and he's awesome and a great cook. She's nice. She's kind. She lets us watch TV. Fun. She's a monster. She's, she's a monster. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. We love you. I love we you. We love you. We love Thank you, Mom. For being your mo Thank you for being our mom. I love you, Mom. You're the I best. I love you. You're the best mom in the, the world. The French toast was amazing this morning. Thank you for feeding us junk food. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. I love you. Good morning, TCC, and Happy Mother's Day to all of you. My name is Jake, and this is Becca. Happy Mother's Day, Becca. It's so good to have you back here with us. Thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Jake. I miss seeing our church family so much and I know you probably do as well. We can't wait to be back together, but in the meantime, I have loved joining in on the online services from home each week. This season is certainly different than anything we've ever experienced, but we know that the Lord is at work and the new opportunities to reach people for Christ these days is super exciting. That's right, just because we're not all able to be together in person each week doesn't mean that our mission to reach others is put on hold. We have so many opportunities to do that through things like Love Your Neighbor, Social Media Challenges, uh, Dinners on Us, and so many others. This season is opening all kinds of new and different doors for us to be a light in the darkness. We hope that you are finding rest, peace, and inspiration in this season, and we're so glad that you continue to join us in worship each Sunday. We're gonna toss it over to the team on stage to lead us in a time of worship, so I invite you to join us as we sing together and dive into God's Word. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to call your mom today. Take it away, worship team.
Well, good morning. Um, I also want to wish all you moms a happy Mother's Day today as well. I hope it's just a a wonderful day as you come together uh, in some way, I hope, uh, with your uh, kids. Um, Thank you to to our kids who participated in our uh, video this morning. Oh my, uh, the things our kiddos will say. It's, uh, yeah, thanks for doing that. It's my privilege uh, this morning to continue our sermon series entitled A New Normal. That is, the direction uh, we choose as we find ourselves at, at a crossroads in our lives. And you may find yourself kind of having this sense again, you know, that, that you're at a crossroads. Certainly our nation is at a crossroads. You can just have this sense. Oh, and the big question is, which way uh, will we go? Uh, last week, uh, Ty started off with the historical pivot point of the Tower of Babel, and uh, the you know, the results of that uh, created certainly a, a new normal, and we've never been the same since with, with all the different languages. Uh, God had said, here is the way I want you to go, and, and they chose to uh, disobey. They chose the way of pride and rebellion, disobedience, and they sought to seek after their own fame and make a name for themselves. It's not uncommon for us as humans to to follow that way. Again, our passage in Jeremiah 6 verse 16 says this, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. Oh, that we would find rest. For our souls. Let's pray together as we go into the word today. So, Father, it is our heart's desire that we would find rest, we'd find hope, that we'd find courage, that we'd find everything that we need in you today. Thank you for your word. And uh, as we look at it today, we pray that you would enable us by the power of your spirit to, to apply it and see ourselves in uh, this story as well. And then to choose you to follow your way, to walk in your way. Lord. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in this passage, it says uh, two different times, ask, uh, ask for the ancient path, ask for the good way. And it certainly implies that one of the things that God is looking at uh, when we are at a crossroads is he's looking for an attitude of humility. You know, this this asking. And, and it's it's not easy to do all the time, but oh, the blessings. The scripture says time and time again uh, how blessed we are when we humble ourselves and actually ask or seek the Lord. In, um, in Psalm 25, verse 9, it says, He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them His way. And then James, the, the brother of Jesus, had something to say about that and emphasize that same need. When we have to choose a way to go, uh, who are we going to love? Who are we going to serve? He said this, James 4, 7, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace and shows favor to the humble. Oh, that's what we desire in this day. But I know, I know it is not easy to ask for directions. I mean, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, prior to, you know, having GPS in our, in our cars or on our phones and everything. Oh, the times we used to have as families in the car. Uh, and it usually went something like this, you know, the, the, the husband is driving and, and the wife looks over and says, are we lost? And of course the husband says, no, 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 I kind of re- I recognize where we are. I think when we get to this corner, we'll, I'll, I'll know where we are. And, and yeah, of course, you get past that corner like, we're lost, aren't we? Oh, no, no, I think, well, there's a gas station right here. Why don't you stop and ask? Oh, no, I'm not going to ask it. Oh, the, the bad, I think women, uh, I think women probably invented GPS and all that. And that has been brought great peace to our, uh, great peace to our families. Um, oh, how grateful I am, though, when I think about the way, following the way, finding the way, that Jesus would say about himself. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And that, that we seek after him, we keep hearing him say, follow me. Uh, and 
uh, invite you to think about that today, to, to, that you would follow Jesus. Today, uh, we are going to go to an Old Testament passage, however, and I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Joshua 24. Um, it's actually a crossroads at this place that we're going to go. It's a place called Shechem. I think I, I want to take you someplace that you might be able to visualize what this might look like. Come with me there. Okay, so here we are again at the, at the crossroads where we kind of started this uh, sermon series in that passage in, uh, in uh, Jeremiah where he says, you stand at the crossroads and, you know, ask for the ancient paths. Uh, it was at a very crossroads like this that, that Joshua called the people. And in Joshua 24, verse 1, it says that Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel in Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves uh, before God. Um, Joshua is old. So you imagine this, old and gray. Uh, now, be careful. I, I know what you're thinking, but listen, he's, a, he's 110 years old. He has, a, he has a few years on me, but he knows, and he knows, like his predecessor Moses, that his, his days are coming to an end. And he so much wants his people, uh, the people of God, to continue to be faithful, to follow God. That's one of the great things that it says about Joshua is that they followed him all the days of his leadership. He, they followed God. They were faithful to him. And so now they're going to have to they have to renew it. Now, this isn't the first time that they've been here. There's lots of significance to Shechem. But early on after Jericho, the defeat of Jericho, and then Ai, yeah, he had gathered all the people there, and he followed through. He, he was obedient to what Moses called him to do, it was to build, a, uh, build an altar on Mount Ebal. In Shechem, there were two mountains, Ebal and Gerizim. And Mount Ebal, Moses had said, I want you to build an altar there. And now here they are now at the very end of his life, and he is going to be again looking at this covenant. When he was there before, he had six tribes on one mountain, six tribes on the other. And they did the curses, almost like, you know, at Fresno State, you know, at, in a stadium where they went back and forth with the, with the curses and with the blessings. Again, remembering and, and remembering and, and again, uh, looking that, okay, God has a way for us. And this way is going to be a way of blessing if we, if we follow him. There's going to be consequences, good consequences, and then there's going to be really hard consequences if we, if we don't follow them. You know, as he's giving his last words to them, that he had, they had given him rest on every, God had given him rest on every side. And then this one beautiful statement, he says, not one of all of the Lord's good promises to Israel had failed. Every one of them was fulfilled. They're at a crossroads eventually he, they're going to have to go home. They're going to have to go one way or the other. And they're going to have to choose this day. And now Joshua wants them to think again. And you're going to have opportunity again to, to renew your commitment to the Lord for your household on this Mother's Day as a home, as a, as a family. And then we have these famous words here that, that Joshua says here. And you can just see it. People on both sides, on both mountains, where he says, Choose for you this day. You're going to have to choose. Choose for you this day who you're going to serve. And then he says these great words, and I hope you will say them today as well. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Well, there's some great, powerful um, gifts that God gives. But let's go back to... Uh, to the sanctuary, to TCC now, and look at some of those promises. Okay, so we're back here in the uh, sanctuary, and I'm going to invite you to look at Joshua 24. The people are assembled, and then Joshua says this rather prophetically. He says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. And then he's going to share with the people. I, I, I see some gifts, these powerful gifts that that he's going to share with them. And the first powerful gift that he is going to share with them is the gift of memory. So for the first 13 verses, 
And God is reminding them, this is what I have done for you. It's such a powerful gift, you know, being able to remember, thinking about our history. And you, you may want to do that today as well, as just to remember what God has done for your family, even what God has done through your mom, and, and uh, praise and thank her for that. Um, and then look at how God has used her in your life, or look at what God has done for your family. And that's what uh, Joshua does here as he again reminds them. And so he recounts their history. The first thing that he talks about is um, their, their call to be a people. So he goes all the way back to the uh, Abraham, Father Abraham, how he went from believing in many gods and God called him to be his uh, follower and he followed God alone, uh, worshiping God alone. And uh, and again, for each of us to remember where God called us from is so important and where our life was before we came um, to the Lord and started following him. The second thing is the freedom. He, he reminds the people, um, listen, I, I've given you freedom and salvation. I p- called you out of out of the land of Egypt and saved you along the way, the Red Sea, uh, each of these places where they thought their life was gone, and yet then he would save them. And he wanted them to remember. It's good for us to remember this as well, because this is, a, a, this is an echo. This is a, 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 a sight of what we experience as well as Jesus, again, saves us and brings us from from the, the grip of slavery to sin and to all sorts of things, and he brings us uh, to freedom. And then number three, he says, remember the victory that it, victories that I gave you over your enemies, these tough places that you found yourself when you were outnumbered or it seemed like there were no way. And maybe you need to remember again today. It's good for us to remember those times in our life where, that's right, it was hard back then. It will give us hope and courage Uh, for now as well as we find ourselves in some hard places now he said remember the victory of um, that I gave you especially spiritual victories there was this story that he refers to where Balak um, pays Balaam a a prophet there to curse the people and and God won't let him do it he there is just victory in this spiritual battle these blessings that God wants to pour on um, his people. He says in Joshua 24, 10, but I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Again, the blessings that we've received in the past, it's good to remember them. And then he reminds them of the gift of grace that he gives them. He's been treating them better than they deserve. In verse 13, he says, so I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities you did not build and you lived in them and you and ate from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant again this abundance the, these gifts that he he gave them and he wants them to remember this as he's calling them to renew again their commitment uh, their covenant to uh, to him um, it, it just reminds i've i've been calling a lot of you these days and I, i've heard so many times uh, recently where um, people who, are, who even are hard up against it but are saying oh God has been is so good to me he's been he's he's been so good to me he's been so faithful we were thinking about TCC you know uh, this how how God has been so faithful to us as a church in the past and again that gives us hope and courage and uh, faith for for the future that he has been with us in the past he will be with us now and, and in the future, I uh, heard someone say, you know, I was getting nervous. I'm, I was getting scared about what's going to happen to my business. But then I remember, no, God gave me this business. I can, I can trust him. He, he will take care of me. Oh, it's, it, it is so uh, good to remember. So that's the first powerful gift, that gift of uh, memory, this gift of remembrance. The second gift is a powerful gift of choice, um, he begins in verse 14 with a, a very strong call, and this was similar to what Moses did with his people. Now Joshua's going to do it, and we continue to do it this day, this strong 
directive, this call into uh, our lives where he says this, now fear the Lord. Now fear the Lord. Fear means to revere. It's, it's to worship, to adore, to honor, to admire, admire profoundly and respectfully. So he says, fear, now fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship before the Euphrates, beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. He's, he's basically saying he's called them together. They're on these hillsides here, and they're going to have to go home. They're having to go in all the different directions to where they live. And he says, I, I'm not going to let you go home without deciding, without saying, what is your choice going to be? So he continues, verse 15, he says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. You know, he just, it, you just recognize you're going to serve something. You and I are going to serve something. We're going to serve someone. And God is again calling us, choose this day and serve, serve me. Well, Joshua's decision, um, which he declares very definitively, and the decision that he's asking for us, is not just a rash one, not just an emotional one. No, he's, he's asking uh, for this decision to be a deep one, very like the resolve, for example, that Daniel had, like this uh, resolve that he was going to believe um, and follow only God in the middle of uh, a pagan um, environment. It needs to be calm, clear, fixed, well-grounded in truth and in reality, and also solemnly made. And that's what Joshua is going to expect of the people there. And that's what we can expect from ourselves as well. It's, it's one of those things that there, are, there have been, you know, so many decisions made, but then just cast aside. No, this has to be something deeper. And it has to be a decision, not just in our head, not just in our, uh, what we say, but then in our actions. It, it kind of reminded me of a uh, boy, back, this brings me back to old youth group days, uh, a metaphor, analogy that I used when, yeah, maybe you've heard this, you know, the tightroper who, who uh, walks across and he says to the people watching him, do you think that I can walk back and forth on this tightrope? And they say, oh yeah, we believe you can. And so, of course, he walks back and forth and he pulls out a wheelbarrow and he says, do you believe that I can push this wheelbarrow across this tightrope? And uh, yes, we believe. And he says, okay, anyone who believes, I want you to get in the wheelbarrow. And that's kind of the choice, the decision that the Lord is making us as well, that we are going to give our lives uh, totally. And yes, it, it, it feels like risky uh, uh, by all means. Another kind of metaphor that we have is that there, you know, the, the two foot, footprints in the sand, I believe it's called, where there's two footprints, and then all of a sudden there's one, and the person asks, Lord, what, why is there only one there? Well, it's, it's because I was, I was carrying you, and I, that's, that's a beautiful poem, but you just, just know that even when he's carrying us, it's, it's more like that wheelbarrow, like it's still, it's still challenging, there's, it's still, a, a, it's risky, but it's, but he's good, and he, he has us, and he's faithful uh, to us. And uh, this is what Joshua keeps, keeps pointing back to. He's been faithful. I know it was hard. I know there were times that you thought you, you were goners, but oh my, look, look back now, and he has been faithful in the past. Um, so choose whatever metaphor you want, but you know, just make sure it's not a metaphor that it's just this soft, kind of cushy, like milk toast kind of life. No, this this life of walking with the Lord, of following Him, is one of of adventure and and yeah, certainly risk and oh, it, it's one of faith. I mean, you you have to remember Joshua when he was called to lead the people that God told him, "Be strong, Joshua. Be strong and courageous." And then He said it again, "Be very strong." and courageous. And again, that's uh, what he now is, he's ready to end his life. He is, again, speaking that into theirs as well. Uh, choose for you this day. A third powerful gift that he gives then is the power of leading by example. I mean, this, what a statement. What a statement. Uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Um, boy, I... I, uh, 
I hope, I hope this is a day, again, where there is a deep sense and a, and a, a deep declaration even that you make as a family, as a mom today again, as a dad, as, as, a, as a young person, that, that I, you know, as for me and, and my house, but as for me, I'm going to follow uh, the Lord. Now, in, uh, in this statement, it, it, it's kind of the English uses a future tense of the word, um, but the Hebrew sense is, is a fuller meaning. It expresses continuous action. It involves the future for sure, but it also can point to the past. So Joshua was undoubtedly affirming, I have chosen, I have chosen, and I will choose again to follow the Lord. And so again, this is, um, this is so important. And, and again, parents, you know, you and I know, and leaders as well, uh, boy, we know that leading by example is, is so important. I mean, you can't just be with words. Uh, our kids have little sniffers for his hypocrisy. They, they spot it right away, and it, it undermines even then what the Lord wants to do. And so then just as a side note, there, there's just this power of, you know, authenticity as well, where we, you know, we're willing to say to our kids and to people, to our friends, and hey, now, I, I'm sorry, I, I got it wrong. I'm, I'm asked for, for your forgiveness. No, I did. I, I do want to follow the Lord. And, um, and then again, oh, by God's grace and by his forgiveness, uh, we, we continue on. Well, uh, the fourth uh, powerful gift here that I see uh, being exercised by Joshua certainly is this, I'm calling it the power of fierce love. Um, fierce love meaning he's, he's willing even to say the hard things. Oh, I, I don't know about you, but oh, how I honor moms for their fierce love at times, this, this courage to say even the hard things. And, um, you know, Joshua had, had this fierce love for righteousness, for his people, for his family, as he's about ready uh, to go to be with the Lord, that they continue to, to follow the Lord. So for righteousness, his, his passion for the Lord and for his, his family. And I know so many of you sense and feel that same passion for your families as well. And so sometimes that means saying, uh, saying the hard things, loving enough to, to outlining, hey, these are the consequences if you don't, if you don't follow the Lord. And Joshua Joshua does that. He says, hey, we're at a crossroads. Look back now. Look what, what um, God has done for you in the past. And I'm about ready to, to, to go on to be with the Lord. You're going to follow other leadership. Um, and if you follow the Lord, oh, you are going to receive these blessings. He can go all the way back to chapter 8, where, again, from one mountain is the blessings. But then he is courageous enough to say, but, but if you don't follow the Lord, uh, you can expect some very, very painful consequences. Now, was he being mean uh, in that regard? Verse 20 says, If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been so very good to you. I mean, was he being mean? No, he wasn't being mean at all. He was simply saying, These, these are the consequences. Oh, and praise the Lord, that day the people, it was a high point for the people of Israel where they said, no, we, we're going to follow, we're going to follow the Lord. Well, the fat, la, uh, fifth final uh, gift here is the, the power, uh, this powerful gift of the visual. And so, again, putting something there uh, for, for Joshua, he says, Joshua recorded these things, this is verse 26, and Joshua recorded these things in the book of of the law, so he wrote them down, and then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. Ah, it would be a reminder from from then on for the people. They remember what what um, what commitment that they had made when they had renewed their commitment to the Lord. I'm just wondering what that might look like for your family. You might want to think about that 
What, what can you do visually, again, creatively, that you could like put in your yard or in your house somewhere? Again, that reminds you, that's right, that we, we're going to follow the Lord. We belong, we belong to Him. Well, this in conclusion, I, um, where, do we, where do we go from here? The people had to go, you're going to go uh, on your way this week. Where do you go from here? Again, I, I just never want to underestimate the, the human will. Oh, the, the power uh, of the human will to survive and to thrive, you know, to, to make your goals and you make your declarations and resolve. And, you know, there's just such amazing stories of what, what people are able to do um, when, when they have, you know, when they have resolved to, uh, to do something. The human will is so strong. Um, so I think Joshua knew that as well. So Joshua kind of reminds the people in verse 19, he says, it's actually strong words that uh, warns against overconfidence when he says, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. And again, and they said, no, okay, no, we will. It's, it's again, coming to him uh, humbly. It reminds me of uh, Luke 14, where Jesus really outlines the cost of discipleship. Um, he, he says, no, it, it's, it's an all-in sort of thing. So what's the greatest act of the human will? Well, I believe the greatest act of the human will is yielding that will to the will of the Father. We see this in Jesus perfectly when Jesus says, uh, at the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, not my will, but, but yours, where he just surrendered. And he was eager, uh, again, uh, to fulfill what God had called him to do. Not my will, but yours. And so we're all the way back to humility again, this posture of, of asking. Um, Jesus says, follow me. If you love me, you're going to obey me. He says things like, my sheep are going to hear my voice. And so again, it's this, this posture and this, this desire to just to have a heightened sense of, of what is the Lord saying? Where is he leading? What does he have for me? Um, what does he have for my family? What is he saying? What is he doing? I think these are good questions. And then again, to ask, Lord, what's the way you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And then to, to listen and to, again, in, in uh, courage and in strength and follow his lead. You know, open-handed and open-hearted. And I'm going to invite you this morning, if you just take a few moments to close your eyes now, and, and invite you to just renew your commitment to the Lord. And um, as parents, maybe even just renew your commitment that, as for you and your house, you, you're going to serve the Lord. And again, this is such the time for, again, as a crossroads, for recalibrating some things, rethinking some things of what the new normal will look like um, here soon. Uh, let me pray. Father, thank you so very much for the gift of this day. I pray, oh, Father, that uh, you would draw many to yourself today, Lord Jesus, and that Again, there would be a resolve, there would be a choice that we choose you, Lord. And that our homes would be blessed by you, that you would show your favor on us. Oh, Lord, we pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us today. As always, if you are inclined, you can give of your tithes and offerings on our TCC website, through our TCC weekly email, or our TCC app. Or you can simply write a check and send it to the address on the screen here. We are so grateful for the faithfulness of this body. And as we continue forward through every crossroad or season, may we truly be able to say that we choose to serve the Lord. So receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Happy Mother's Day.